Let's take a drive. Head west on Highway 61 toward Grand Marais, as if you were just getting into the city limits after visiting Grand Portage. To your left, you'll spot the historic St. Francis Xavier Church at Chippewa City. It's quite the spot. It's nestled about a mile from the city limits, stark and white against its background of green. Historian Ruth E. Allard writes it this way. The story of Chippewa City and the St. Francis Xavier Catholic Church is a story about Ojibwe generosity, adaptation, and resilience. You can read those lines in her book, Stories from Superior's Northern Shore, found on the shelves of the Cook County History Museum. The church, built in 1865, a beautiful reminder of a village that once thrived, serving more than a hundred families. I asked Michael Morrison about his family's many contributions to the parish. He recalled that we didn't have a priest there all the time. Once in a while, a priest would come back from Grand Marais, and most of the time, the priest would come from Cloquet. He stayed at the back of the church. There was a cot, and that's where he slept. He ate over at our house, so our house acted sort of like a mission for priests who came to serve Mass. It no longer hosts Sunday services, but by appointment, you can still step inside and learn about one of the last physical remnants of a vibrant community. Now in town, take a left at the stoplight. As you drop down the hill, you might actually see the letters before you see the shop, the blacksmith shop, Bali's blacksmith shop. Bali has, he had a certain temperament and you didn't cross that, that line perfectly. And this guy brought in a stove and a drawing, and he told Bali, this is how I want you to do it. And he just crossed the line, like, this is how I want you to do it. And when he was all done, and he started to walk out, and Bali said, hey, just a minute. I, Did I forget something? You forgot your drawing and your stove. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a collection of stuff like Bali had. It was, it's almost all metal. Yeah. I mean, it's almost yeah. all yeah. metal, cast, forks, whatever. Behind it, the Metal Forest Service Building, which was added in the 1960s. Loggers and the like relied on Bali's metal workers to keep their equipment operational and the economy viable. The shop recently got a deep cleaning, I, I want to hear. was reunited with some of its tools, and perhaps an old buddy. We imagine Al Bali driving up to the shop day after day in his 1936 Federal dump truck. It rests now behind the shop. I remember lots of things about Al, but nothing specific. I, you know, he used to sit in here in his school desk. Yep. He'd write out the slips and he always had, it looked like the same old hat on. Oh, yes. Like a 40s and 50s type, I don't know what they call those hats. Just a hat. A felt hat. Yeah, a felt hat. Yeah. Hop back in. There's more. One block and some change ahead, right next door to the donut shop, sits the stately Cook County History Museum. Once upon a time, the Lightkeeper's House. It was my uh, grandfather's brother that came here first in the search of mineral. And uh, he got my grandfather to come here. My grandfather got my father to come here. And after he came, he started negotiations with the United States government to build a, a lighthouse here. And if they would build a lighthouse, he agreed to take care of it. In the middle of what must have been a grand sitting room, a gleaming gem encased in glass as if it were a diamond in some majestic jewel store setting. 
The fresnel lens. Its one duty to shine brightly in the harbor entrance lighthouse, guiding ships to safety from Lake Superior's fiercest storm, which it did for over a hundred years. The original wood lighthouse was built in 1885. An octagonal cast lantern was incorporated into a timber-framed enclosed pyramid timber tower approximately 32 feet tall. The structure was laid at the end of the east breakwater and was damaged every couple years, sometimes severely, as the lake waves pounded on the wood structure. In 1923, the old timber structure was replaced with the steel structure we see today. Too many countless stories to tell in this short time about what the museum holds now. But at last count, it was over 28,000 individual items. And that reminds me, some of those thousands of items can be found at the Johnson Heritage Post Art Gallery, or casually known as the JHP. Johnson, as in Anna Johnson, famous Cook County artist, Anna Johnson. And my mother, although she had practically no training in art, in the sense of formal training, uh, was, a, was a very fine artist. Uh, she could do work in uh, oil, work in watercolor, etchings. If you were around in the early 1900s, you might have seen Anna walking around the dirt streets of Grand Marais with her pet moose. Yep, I said it. Her moose. But mostly, you'd see Anna painting. The JHP proudly shows off Anna's paintings, like the accessories that make the outfit. To this day, it continues to inspire artists near and far. All right, this is where you're going to have to stop and hoof it a little. I parked in front of the North House Folk School, just off Highway 61. But you can also park in the Grand Marais Municipal Campground to get to this next historic site. A bit off the beach, near the Folk House outbuildings, is the Niji. And its next-door neighbor, the Fish House. Niji is Ojibwe and friend is its English equivalent. The Niji was a fishing tug that braved the waters of Superior in the 1930s. Whether you're in Cook County for a visit or you have a permanent Cook County zip code, the Arrowhead's history surrounds you. And it's certainly worth a drive around town. On behalf of the Cook County Historical Society, I'm Tracy Croteau.